And welcome to the Krug Show, everybody, as we look ahead to the 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. Sunday, they come to us live from SoFi Stadium and joining us from W or from KWHY Television in Southern California, Claudia Gestro, who is a reporter for the DLT show. And she's with us to help us talk a little bit about the Rams and the Niners. Claudia, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you so much, Larry, for inviting me to your show. Uh, obviously, you guys are looking for this very interesting battle for, on Sunday between the Rams and the 49ers. So, yeah, we are really excited, too. Can't wait to see that one. Yeah, it should be an exciting game. Well, tell us a little bit about, about the Rams this year. Obviously, they're the defending Super Bowl champions, and they've you know have got Matthew Stafford, um, but they've also had a lot of problems, it seems like, this year. They, they, they're struggling to run the football. Uh, they're, they don't look quite like the same team that was in the Super Bowl a year ago. It's been a little bit of a struggle for Sean McVay's team, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. You are correct. Quarterback Matthew Stafford has been performing okay, but not as great as he was last season. I think maybe part of the reason we don't want to, you know, make excuses, but he was a little hurt. As you know, um, he, he went, you know, he had a shot in his arm and all that. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but um, he hasn't performing that well. Um, we're talking about, you know, Stafford's touchdown to interception ratio is upside down. He hasn't been doing well. So Stafford and the offensive coaches, they need to figure it out how to limit the interceptions and increase the touchdown passes. So I think that I, I don't know how they can fix that. Obviously, there's some issues, as you know, right now, what's going on. The biggest question for the Rams right now is can they, how they can try to, to uh, get, I'm sorry, to um, so they they they're trying to trade running back Cam Cam Akers. So it's been a big issue right now going on in that locker room. Akers only has 151 yards rushing this season, which is low. Akers is currently on the injury list, but Coach McVay said Akers is on the roster, so they think they might use him. Obviously, when he comes back. And if he's still with the Rams, but it's questionable, obviously, the situation with Akers. They're trying to find ways how to bring this team back the way that they were last season, you know. So I, I don't know if he's, you know, what do they call, uh, they won the Super Bowl and they're, they're, they're still trying to wake up from that, the emotion. The hangover. The hangover. <laughs> Yeah. What it, what is the story Claudia with Cam Akers? Is it is it a personal thing? Is it um an injury related situation? Is there is it a is it a Cam Akers against another teammate situation because he was their starting running back and then he kind of fell out of favor and we never really got any details as to you know what was going on behind the scenes there. Of only that that Sean McVay was saying that there was a very good chance that they would attempt to shop him before the deadline. I've even seen reports that if they can't find a trade partner, that they may actually wind up releasing him. Is has Cam spoken on it? Has McVeigh spoken on it? Do we know what the issue is? They're not going in details what the issue it is right now, but it sounds like it might be something maybe personal. I I, I don't know. They're very aggressive when it comes to like if things are not working out. As you saw what happened with the, you know, later uh, quarterback last couple of seasons, they're just easy to just go ahead and take action on like something it's not working out. We're just going to move on from that person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, so, it's it, to me, it's one of the more interesting things because he was not just a pretty good player. I would say Cam Akers was a very good player. And then suddenly um, we hear from McVay that it's not working out, that they're going to look to try to find a new home for him. And I would imagine because of his talent that there will probably be some teams in the league that before the November first week in November trade deadline probably will call Les Snead and, and make an offer for Cam Akers. I don't know what you're hearing on your end, but um, I get the sense that there will be a market for him in the trade in the in the trade world uh, if you know if and when his name is out there. I think so. I think he's still a good asset to any franchise. 
I mean, he's being known for, he was the running back before he got hurt. He was the guy that the Rams were looking for and, you know, putting their faith on this, you know, offensive, you know, line. So they were really trying to work with him. I don't know exactly what happened, but after he came back, obviously we saw that he hasn't really been the one uh, running back like he was. Yeah. How about OBJ? I know Odell Beckham Jr. was a key cog for the Rams a year ago. He's still out there. Um, is there a chance that the Rams bring OBJ back to the mix? Or what are you hearing on that front? Or do you think he's going to go somewhere else? Mm, uh, as far as him, we don't know anything yet. I know that he still has a locker. And he does. Yes, he still has a locker there, but they haven't said anything about it yet. I that's um it's nobody had talk about anything else i mean I'm, reporters we always ask about him over and over but it's you know uh, as you saw some of the players saying you know we want you back we want you back and um nothing has happened in the in the area how about the Rams' offensive line, Claudia? It seems like you know a year ago they had they had Andrew Whitworth at left tackle, and he kind of anchored things up front for them. And then he, you know, opted to retire, and you can't fault him for doing it, right? He he's played a long time in the NFL, and he's got his family at home, and he's probably thinking about life after football. But that's put the Rams' offensive line into kind of a very unsettled status, and then they've had injuries. Um, it seems like the offensive line is kind of like their problem spot. Um, would you would you say that's correct? And and what are you hearing about their offensive line coming into this game? Well, uh, uh, you are correct. That's exactly you know it's been the problem. Um, I think they're trying to get uh, the run going. They're trying to get this offense going. As you know, I don't know if you heard, but the good news right now, the Rams is that Brian Allen and the wide receiver Ben Jefferson are back. Right. And, uh, it's a day by day thing. So uh, Ben Jefferson, you know. Um, it's it's um it's going to probably be a little helpful to you know with the whole situation but you know having an experienced center like Brian Allen Allen um he should improve that offensive line which it should help now that obviously the Joe Noble it's being out so i think there's some hope there for that situation you know there was so much talk up here last year when the 49ers played down there twice that um that the 49er fans had taken over the stadium to the point where Matthew Stafford had to go to the silent count in his home stadium which is just an almost an unheard of thing has there been any discussion this week about the 49er fans invading SoFi Stadium and maybe the Rams uh, season ticket holders trying to you know make sure that that does not happen by maybe not selling their tickets on the secondary market because it it, it was quite overwhelming how many 49 fans descended on SoFi oh. Stadium the last couple of times. It felt very much like a 49er home game. At least it sounded like one. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's crazy. They are invading SoFi <laughs> Every Every time they come, it's, it's unbelievable. The whole stadium is red. It's, it's uh, I think, honestly, I think it's going to happen again. So we're we're waiting to see what's you know they're they're trying to get their fan base i think the rams are doing a good job this season you know to get more involved with the doing more things with the community and try to see if that fan base you know they need more fan base definitely you know uh to come to this these games especially against the 49ers but no doubt about it they are probably going to be there cheering again for their team and it's going to be all red <laughs> yeah, you can almost guarantee it. What was the impact of winning the Super Bowl? I know Southern California has kind of a reputation. Everybody's laid back and there's so many different things to do. And people go to the beach and they're they're worried about stars and they're not necessarily focused as hardcore on sports as certain other markets. But this team won the Super Bowl. Um, have you been able to tell? A difference between last year's momentum and this year's momentum after after being champions of the league? 
Oh, are you, you were talking about the Rams, correct? Like, yeah. Sorry. I mean, do you notice that there's more Ram fans at this, or more people around town wearing Rams gear because they did win the Super Bowl last year? Yeah, I, I think I see more proud fans now. <laughs> you know, they go out and I see more flags out, out in, in in the highways. I see. I mean, even I seen, you know, when I was covering the baseball, I had seen people coming with jerseys from the Rams, which is interesting. And, uh, yeah, I, I believe that the fans are really happy. I mean, why why are not going to be happy? You know, this is this is a big deal. You know, we, we are the champions. That's what everybody is chanting on the street. I definitely see it growing more and more. And I think it's going to get better. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the, the the locker room. You get a chance to talk to a number of players. Do you have a personal favorite? Do you have guys that you like to talk to on this team? Who who are the best talkers on this team? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> do you do you get um, a chance to converse with the players very often and, and do you have do you have guys that you enjoy talking to? Um I love listening to Bobby Wagner. I, I would Bobby Wagner, yep. Yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm talking to him all the time, but I, you know, whenever he's at the podium or talking to us, I just, I just enjoy, you know, um, the conversations. He seems like a very smart person, you know. Uh, very intense, of, isn't he? Very, very intense. intense. <laughs> yes. Very intense. And what I like about him the most now that he's back home, he is just a giver. You know, he's really putting a lot of time around in the community with his people. So there's a lot of events that he does, you know, in a weekly basis, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot about. Yeah, him. that is cool. He's an LA guy, right? He, he's from Southern oh, Cal. Yes. So he played his whole career in Seattle, played collegiately at Utah state, but now this, this uh, Bobby Wagner to the Rams is a, a homecoming for Bobby. How about Jalen Ramsey or Aaron Donald or some of their stars on defense? Uh, or, do you have a chance ever to talk to those guys? You know, Donald's still playing at an exceptional high, le- exceptionally high level and, and Ramsey as well. I mean, you they may be the best at their position in the league. Totally. I think I seeing a big growth on um, Jalen Ramsey. He's like more like mature. Totally. I can see that he's being uh, a different Jalen that we've seen when he moved here to California. He's more open to all. As you see him on Twitter too, he's very out there. He's open. He also has, I think, a, a podcast that he's doing now, which, you know, I couldn't couldn't believe it when he said that he was going to have a podcast. I'm like, wow, he's actually going to have a podcast. He's going to talk more. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, um, he's a fun guy. He's a funny and he keeps it very real. That's what I like about him. He doesn't care. He just says it the way he wants to say things. Yeah, no, he doesn't. He doesn't pull any punches. He's as honest as the day is long. How about Cooper Cup? Cooper Cup, seems, uh, Claudia, strikes me as a guy who's very quiet, very introverted, uh, doesn't seek the limelight. Doesn't. He's not a me, me, me guy. Look at me, look at me. He's. I mean, he had 16 catches in the game at Levi Stadium. The 49ers won that game, and it was a pretty one-sided game, but. Cooper Cup still caught 16 passes from Matthew Stafford. They really, the 49ers have never really been able to stop Cooper Cup. They found ways to win at times, but he always gets his. But what what's he like to to cover? He, uh, you are right about that. He's not really like a big, you know, talker, crazy. Uh, he's more like in, more like peace. Like I I want to I I want to find a good word to say this, but he's. Um, yeah, he's super smart and he will talk to you for long periods of time. You know, if, if you have an interview with him, he's just, you can pick his brain. It's, it, it's just, he's just amazing, but he's not like, you know, a bragger or somebody who has a big head or anything. He doesn't act like that. He's just very down to earth. Um, uh, great guy. Uh, yeah. We like him a lot there, too. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine the fans love yeah. Cooper Cup. One guy I wanted to ask you about, because I thought he was terrific in the first matchup. Um, your light went out there. If you want. I, I I'm so sorry. That's all right. Um, you can turn it back on if you want. Yeah, no, it's just I think it, I think I'm out of uh, – this is going to be – You're out of juice. Show. 
no problem. No problem. But um, don't worry about it. You're fine like that. Um, as far as Darion Kendrick, you know, the, the corner for the Rams, the rookie corner, you know, he's really played at a really high level. I, I think if there was one player from the Rams that really stood out to me, Claudia, in that first matchup, it was Darion Kendrick, uh, the rookie from Georgia, uh, the cornerback. He's just he's very aggressive. Uh, he's very physical. Um, and he just he's care. I mean, you talk about a guy who carries himself with a lot of confidence. I mean, you can kind of you can feel the swagger of Darion Kendrick uh, when he's out there on the field. Have you had a chance to talk to the rookie from Georgia at all this year? No, I haven't yet. But, you know, obviously, like you just mentioned, he's been doing such a great job. I mean, yeah. they do have some kind of new guys that I think they're putting, you know, their time and they're, they're, they're helping out. So we're going to see some of those guys, you know, playing probably more just, you know, to make the Rams look way better um, through the season. So no doubt about that. Yeah. What do you think of Sean McVay? Do you have you had any uh, interview time with Sean McVay? Because to me, he's just he's so positive. He's got so much energy. And I look at him and I'm thinking there are times and you know, he's mad um, and you can kind of see his anger. But man, his his enthusiasm and his overall energy, you can I mean, you can see why this guy has gotten so far as, you know, the one of the youngest coaches in pro football, because he's just he's a ball of energy. He's got so much intensity. What's he like to cover on a day to day basis? Oh, my God. You just said it. It's like drinking a cup of coffee. <laughs> like a, it's like a double shot of like a so, you know, I, I'm not kidding. Um, there's times that I go there and I'm so exhausted. I'm tired. Once he go on that podium, it's like lights out. Like, and he does have a lot of energy. I don't know how, where he gets it from, but and it radiates. Once you sit there, you just feel it. It just comes out like an air, you know, and it's, it's unbelievable. I, I, I don't know how, but I get it, you know, and, and you can tell you're watching the games, right? How he's moving back and forth. Yeah, no. He, terrific, he, terrific he, energy. No question. Any, 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 and it's like the guy just eats, breathes, lives football. How did the Rams, you know, the Rams have had a lot of time because they had the bye week last week. So how did they use that bye week? Did, did uh, McVay give them some time off to spend with their families or was it nose to the grindstone? All Niners, Niners, Niners. Do you know how they spent their, their week off? No, uh, you got me on that because I wasn't around. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. So what do you? Sorry about that. No, no, not at all. I'm at, I, how would I? You wouldn't necessarily know. How about how about uh, what you expect to see Sunday in this matchup? It's a it's an important game for both teams. It's obviously a hugely important game for the 49ers. They've lost back to back now to the Falcons and the Chiefs, and it's a big game for the Rams as well because they're kind of trying to reestablish uh, themselves after kind of a slow start, put back together their injured offensive line, and and make a big run for the playoffs in the second half of the year this is a vital game for both teams oh yeah totally this is a very very important game for them obviously as we talk about the 49ers you know they have their number every time and they're gonna they they definitely need to win this game to prove themselves that they are going to be, you know, back in the postseason. I personally think that's like the most important game this Sunday. This is their momentum, you know, they got to do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it's a huge game for them. It's totally, you know, um, but, you know, the the 49ers, I, I don't, you know, I, I feel like Sean probably – every time he probably is thinking what are they doing you know that they cannot get this guy they cannot just beat them and it, it's pretty much comes down to the same situation the same issues that we were just talking about before but is it mental like i sometimes i feel like it might be a little bit of mental like it's i think it's in their head already they need to just move on and do this did you feel you know, like it, it, it is interesting thing? because I always felt like it was 
Well, first of all, does McVay and Shanahan work together? And they're both relatively young coaches. And I think there's a pretty good rivalry between Sean and Kyle. But I, I really think when I look back at last year's three matchups, that first game, and I don't know if you were, did you come to San Fran, did you come to uh, Santa Clara for the first game? No, I didn't. So that first game, that month, that national TV game, I think it was week 10 and the 49ers started that game with like an 18 play drive and it was mostly running the football and they made, they made it a kind of a referendum on who's tougher. And I felt like the Rams tried to match that toughness, not only in that game, but in that later season game at the end of the regular season. And only after they got to the playoffs, did they kind of realize, Hey, the 49ers cannot cover Cooper cup. So instead of trying to run it and be tough and physical, let's just do what we do best and and it will work out. And I felt like that's exactly what happened. They leaned on Cooper Cup more in that playoff game. They got a lead. And once they got that lead between Sean Robinson and Donald and Von Miller, who was on this team last year, Leonard Floyd, they just dialed up the heat on the quarterback. And the 49er offensive line was just totally overwhelmed in the final couple of drives of the game. So that's kind of how I saw it. I, I fairly felt like – the Niners may be the more physical and tougher team, but the Rams have some advantages that if they just lean on those advantages, they may be the better team. And even to this point, so I'm I'm eager to see what the Rams look like in this game because, you know, will they come out and try to run it and show that they're physical like the 49ers have kind of demonstrated? Or will they just keep throwing it to Cooper Cup because the Niners are very banged up at corner and Cooper Cup caught 16 balls in the, in the first game. So um, what kind of game plan do you expect to see? Do you think the, the Rams will come out and they'll run it? Or do you think it's going to be another game where it's Stafford to Cup, Stafford to Cup all day? Well, I think the, they're going to definitely try to, like you said, run it. They, this is their chance. They have to do something different. They have to change what they are doing in the previous games. They have to try something completely different. Show that you – no, know, don't show that card from – before and 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 trying to come up with a different plan because it's not working obviously it's not working out it's the same situation the same issues and you're gonna get the fi- the same results so yeah no i mean so so you, you're saying do something different don't don't come out and just throw it to cup they're maybe try to get that run game established I believe so. Definitely the wrong game needs to be more established. It doesn't seem like it's going well for them. Like, you know, we talked before. Um, I feel like they rely a lot on Cooper Cup and, and not only in the 49ers game. I think we've seen in recent games that they've been doing the same thing, which is very odd. Do you how many how many Rams players have you come across that speak Spanish? Any? <laughs> Uh, no, but I actually did a segment with Bobby Wagner. I have a segment that's called Spanish 101. So I actually did a segment with him and he did say some words in Spanish. So it, it was fun. I nice, think they nice. Do, like, they obviously know some words because here in California, you have There's so many Spanish speaking Spanish people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we could, it's called Desde la Tribuna is Desde the name of the show. Tribuna. DLTDeportis.com uh, is where people can go and check it out. And yeah. and how long how long of a show is it? It's that a you do? one hour show. One an hour, hour show. show. And it, is it a once a week show or a multiple times a week or is it? How, what's it's the probably, schedule? A couple of times a week, uh, but mostly on the weekend. So it's probably like I said, Saturday or Friday. So either or, or sometimes it's Friday and Saturday. So and is it a taped show or is it live? Um, I it's a tape show. I think believe so. Well, I sent my reports, so <laughs> <laughs> I sent my reports. So it's it's uh some of some your parts decide, taped. Your parts taped. Yeah, I'm part. I'm part taped. Yeah. Yeah. But my boss goes live. Yeah. <laughs> oh, does he now? Who else is on that show with you? Um, there is another reporter. Um. It is one girl. We have sometimes a girl. We have announcers. They come in from other TV stations. They come and talk about not only about football, but soccer. So obviously soccer is huge in 
Latin America. So yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, and you yourself are from are from my. You worked in Miami and now are in LA. So yeah, how would you so- how would you compare the two markets? Oh my God, those it's a uh, it's a big difference. Um, What's well, the biggest must- difference? What would you say is the biggest biggest difference between Miami and LA, in your mind? This is a sports market here. This is why my, Miami's not. I don't feel Miami it is. Not at all. I lived there for a long time and I feel like it's not a sports town at all. This is a sports town. Most popular team in Miami in your mind, Heat, Dolphins, Marlins, Hurricanes. What's uh, the most popular team in the in the city of Miami? I think after the Miami Heat won their championship, they became the most popular team there because they got a championship. I mean, the baseball team, obviously, everybody loves baseball, but have you seen the images of how many people go and watch a baseball game over there? It's empty. Yeah, not 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 many. Nope. No. Not a lot. Hey, what do you think of SoFi Stadium? It, on television, it looks incredible. It has the, has the like the. It's not it's not a dome, but it doesn't seem like an outdoor stadium. It's got a canopy over the top of it. What do you think of it? Oh, it's uh, gorgeous. It's fantastic. I, I love it. Yeah, I, it looks it looks incredible on TV. Oh no, no doubt about it. I mean, it's it's, it's gorgeous. It's got all the big screens. It's it's. Just amazing, yeah, amazing, the vibration, the music, the sound, everything. If you're going to go out on the weekend and have some drinks and dinner, would you rather do it in Miami or someplace oh. in Los Angeles? <laughs> oh, my God, you got me on that one. <laughs> what's the what's the more fun town to, to go out, go out well, in Miami, South Beach or pick your spot in L.A.? Oh, that's a hard one. I never going to, I got to say, probably Miami will always be the fun town to go. Yeah. The park. People yeah. love Miami. People love Miami. Claudia, give us your, your opinion on what you think the final score is going to be Sunday. It's a game that the Rams want to get. It's a game that the 49ers badly want to want to win. Uh, this could be a pivotal game in the division going forward. This could be a pivotal game in the, in the conference playoff picture going forward. What do you think the final score is going to be? Who's going to win? All right, you get you give me the choices and I pick. <laughs> well, okay, you can either go with the Rams or the Niners, and you can go with a close uh, close game or a blowout, and you can go low scoring, high scoring. So who you who you going with? High scoring, low scoring, Rams or Niners? What do you think? I'm going with the Rams, and it's going to be. You mean the win to win? They're gonna win. You think the Rams um, will beat the Niners? Okay. I think so. I think this is. I think they'll do it. And uh, what 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 what, what, what will score? the final score be? <laughs> you mean high or low? Low? No. Yeah. What do you? I, I would like, say well, close. I would say close. Close. Close game. Yeah. And close. The 49ers rarely get blown out. Though they got no, blown out no. this week. They got beat by three touchdowns. I, you think I'll, it's gonna be a close game, but the Rams win? Yes. What's the final score? Uh, I'm not good at that. I'm <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to put a number. I'm really bad. I don't want to put a number in there. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx anyone. You don't want to jinx it. You don't want to jinx it. <laughs> I don't want well, to jinx hey, it. Claudia, if people want to follow you on Twitter, tell them where where they can follow you on Twitter. What your handle is, and and what kinds of things do you tweet? Is it all Rams and LA sports, or do you, are there other things that you talk about on Twitter? Um, we, I do baseball, hockey, um, a lot of baseball for sure. And some basketball too. Get out so to the Lakers. What do, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think of Staples? Um, uh, the new crypto, they call it the crypto. Oh, okay. Yeah. The new crypto. The crypto nice. center. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't changed. Maybe they changed, uh, some of the lighting, um, equipment. I see the lighting. It's changed a little bit for the Lakers scene and the Clippers. So I mean, it's pretty much the same. Just color. The colors are more like bluish, purple, or something like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but it's it's a really nice arena. 
no go wrong for that one. At yeah, all. it's right downtown. Very convenient. Very convenient. Claudia, it was a pleasure talking to you. For once again, you're a reporter for the DLT show, K K W H Y television station. Yeah. And uh, we wish you nothing but success with your show going forward. And thanks for stopping by on the Krug show and previewing Rams 49ers for our audience in London. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, but you haven't given me your score. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my score. All right, I'm going to go 49ers to get a win. I do agree with you. I think it's going to be close. Okay. I'm going to say 49ers are struggling a little bit on defense right now. So I'm going to say 31-24 49ers with lots and lots and lots of red showing up at SoFi Stadium to support the 49ers. What do you think? All right, we'll see. All right, we'll, we'll so maybe we'll make a wager. Now. Should we? Should we have a wager on it? What should we bet? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> do you? Let's, you, know do you I'm, I'm down to bet. I'm, look at bet. you. You're down to bet. I like yeah. that. Okay. So what should we wager? What should the wager be? Should we set? Do, would you like Niner gear? You want? You want some Niner? Oh. You want a Niner <laughs> something or other? We can. We could probably. Di- we, you know. How about this? We'll send you a Niner Niner souvenir if the Forty okay. ers lose to the Rams. If okay. the Rams beat the 49ers, you have to send us some Rams souvenirs. Rams. Okay, sounds good. Or just one Ram souvenir. That sounds Looks like good. you got some bobbleheads up there. Do you have bobble? Yeah. Am I seeing bobbleheads up there? Yeah, these are all my bobbleheads. Do you have a Ram? Bo- Do I see a Dodger bobblehead right there? Is that a Dodger, Dodger bobblehead? I have an Otani bobblehead, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Do you have a Ram bobblehead? Um, no, but I have a pin. I have the I have a Ram thing. Ooh, okay. How about this? If the Niners beat the Rams, you send me your Rams pin. <gasps> no. <laughs> no. 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 I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Keep the Rams pin. How about this? We'll we'll just go souvenir for souvenir. No, I'll, I'll find I'll find a 49er souvenir that we will mail to you if the Rams beat the Niners. If the Niners beat the Rams, you have to send us some some Rams something. I said the Rams will but I win by maybe a field goal. Rams by a field goal. We'll hold you to it. <laughs> Claudia, thanks again for your time. Really a pleasure to catch up with you. We with you wish you nothing but luck this year covering the Rams and and uh I'll say good luck, but you know I don't mean it. I, I'm rooting for the 49ers, so I won't say good luck. But, uh, <laughs> but it was a pleasure catching up with you, and uh, and thanks for stopping by and helping us give us giving us a little preview on the game. We really appreciated it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Claudia. Bye.